the um, pass in your homework, please. I want to say for um, YouTube, thank you for all the birthday belated. I'm still getting them. Uh, my birthday's over. You don't have to keep sending them to me, but thanks anyway. Um, the um, Since we upgraded, if that's the right word, uh, the seminar on August of 2010, where we tightened up the mentor program, and um, we tightened up the accountability, uh, and uh, we had uh, weekly reports, etc. The um, um, the the um, just put it there. Everybody got it in. Okay. okay. Okay, is there, uh, I'm not interested in the reason, okay. Um, every day somebody will fuck something up. Just like I took a shit this morning. So don't ever ask me to go to the gym. It just, that's the life. That's life. If we were at war, we'd be dead. I want to thank... Um, uh, we have an uh, active duty uh, Air Force captain, and we have an uh, a active reserve. I don't know how to say it in the Canadian services, but, uh, uh, and I want to thank him for his service. And the, uh, but uh, getting back to what I was saying, since we tightened up the, uh, the program, the, the results that we, um, that we calculated for my 25th anniversary of QLA, which was last May the 23rd, uh, were, um, I knew that they were better. I didn't know how fucking much better they were. They're off the chart. If we were a stock, I mean, our stock chart would be like this. Now, um, but in conjunction with that, as you know, some of you, how many of you have I, did I see out in the real world before you got here? I met with you. OK. And, the, uh, and I tell you, you ask me questions. We have 20 or 30 minutes, and I tell you what I think. And most of the ideas that you have aren't, sh aren't worth shit. OK? And I tell you that. Uh, the, um, and I tell you, you, sometimes you ask me what I call life questions. And I normally tell you, you're fucked up. Because you are. Because I'm the last guy that you come to see. Now, some of you think, or not some of you, most people in the world think that I'm expensive, which I'm really not. But the Because uh, we've had people come to the seminar. At the end of the seminar, the week, they've given me a check for $100,000. And this is before we had the mentor program. Because that's what they thought minimum it was going to be worth to them. Now, in both cases, both of those guys became billionaires. Now, were they betting on themselves? I don't know. And see, you guys will spreadsheet. Well, why did they do that? It doesn't make a fuck. They had confidence. Most of you are here because you lack self-confidence, you lack self-esteem, you lack uh, self-worth. And some of you are here just because you want to get your willy wet, like I said last night. You can't get laid. Um, but getting back to, to the, the stats, I get emails from people that I met, like several of you in this audience, uh, and I got an email this morning from a guy uh, from Los Angeles, and uh, he, was in, he wanted to make uh, the Muslim world right. Uh, and he, uh, either Muslims were misunderstood, oh, it's a, eh, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't make, I told him nobody gave a fuck you know, nobody gives a shit about Dalai Lama except the Dalai's followers. Nobody gives a shit. Well, I got an email from him today. Um, I'm in a long war and peace, you know. And when I tell you, when you do your weekly reports and, and when you do your homework, and I forgot to tell you this last night, err on the side of war and peace, meaning longer is better. Because most of you can't articulate your thoughts. So if I have more words to read, I can give you the more benefit of the doubt. Some of you, they think you're smart. We've got a PhD in here and a PhD candidate and God knows what else and a few MBAs. You're not. If you were smart, you wouldn't be here. But getting back, so I'm reading the email, and I actually went through. Lewis, if you're there, I read your fucking email. But I, thought, I said you were a dipshit then, and you're still a dipshit. But then in this long email, War and Peace, he says you were right, Mr. Pena. Well, as Brian QLA Rose says, the old man's always right, which I am. You know, when you've lived as many years as I have, but more importantly, when you've been in as many transactions as I have. 
you know, you have to have learned something. And I stopped counting at 1,000 deals. So he goes through to explain why I was right about uh, my thought process about um, him wanting uh, Muslims were misunderstood, or I'm not sure. And, um, but if it took him a year to figure this out, this is the point of the story. I won't say it was wasted. But if you don't just take what I say in the seminar, like the Lord told you, like Allah fucking told you, you're wasting your money here. Because I have no hidden agenda. None. You've already paid to be here. Everything else, everything's free, and you're going to get a whole bunch of more shit that the guys don't have free on the website in the eight gigs you get when you leave here. And if you lose the thumb drive, you don't get another one. We've had people lose the thumb drive while, before they've even left here. You don't get a second one. There are no second chances. So I'm just telling you that. I don't give a fuck what happens to that thumb drive. You will not get another. And if I find out you gave them yours, you're out. I can't make it any more clear. So, so back to, OK, this guy, War and Peace. And he was a nice kid, a fat kid. And I, I, I think I might have called him Lard. I called him just when I said, uh, keep pushing, Lard ass. I actually answered the email. Um, because for those of you that are fat, and if you don't think people look at you and you're fat, you're sick. So for those of you that are ugly, this program it works better if you're good looking. And if and some of you don't, you know, when we talk about self-image, I mean, when you look at yourself in the mirror, some of you don't like what you see. When I look around, I don't see how any of you could like what you see. You're bald, you're fat, you're, yeah, what? you're Asian, you wish you weren't, yeah, I could go on and on and on. But when I tell you this shit, and one of the reasons, and then we'll talk later about uh, Josh, uh, he, he actually listened, not to everything, but most everything, uh, and that's why he's done well. Okay, now I want you to say, my name is Rufus Doofus, I'm from Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, I'm 26 years old, whatever, and uh, not your last name. Not your last name. Because these cocksuckers will hunt you down like fucking dogs. Some of them even use facial recognition to hunt you down. That's how sorry these cunts are. Okay. My name is Atia. I live in Germany. And I'm 34. Adele, Washington, D.C., 28. David, San Diego, 24. Ethan, Vancouver, 29. Josh, 20. Las Vegas, Nevada. Surrender, 38, Toronto, Canada. Stop. I used to have a driver named Surrender. Anyway, okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Carl, 11, 45. Tom, 47, Belgium. Adam, 34, Antigua. Nicholas, London, 30. Adam, Sweden, 29. Julian, 20, New Jersey. Peter, the Netherlands, 32. Mustafa. 24, Virginia. Noah, Virginia, 27. Nick, the Netherlands, 32. Thomas, 36, Poland. Anna, 37, Poland. Cohen, the Netherlands, um, 37. Tobias, 27, Cologne, Germany. Remy, 21, Netherlands. Array, London, 17. Tony, Sydney, Australia, 52. Uh, the surrender makes me uh, think of a story. I also had um, a uh, st uh, um, Gopinat. I had a driver named Gopinat. And when I first met him, surrender, I mean, and it's spelled different, but, uh, but anyway, when Gopinat and uh, one of my staff saying, um, the new driver is uh, Gopi. And uh, I said, okay. And when I call him Gopi, he says, well, no, sir, I'd I rather you call me my whole first name. Well, Gopi's not, no, no, it's Gopi not. No fucking way. Gopi, you've gone through your whole fucking miserable life being called Gopi not? <laughs> now, in India, it's a different thing. I understand, okay? But when I tell you, you know, uh, when I tell you some of, the, the, some of these facts that we're going to go through, 
And um, the, um, if you don't take it by gospel, you're going to be fucked. Fuck not that you don't ultimately succeed. I don't mean fuck that way, but fuck is going to take you longer. See, I think one year for the mentor program is, is inordinately too long. Back before 2010, we didn't have a program. And most of the people up there are from that era. By the way, turn off your cell phones and don't turn on your laptops. Okay? We, lo we locked your phones up back in those days. They, co they, didn't, they couldn't speak to anybody for a week. There was no mentor program. But if they had a problem with a deal, not getting the chairman, not getting an industry advisor, they called me and I helped them. Now, mo some of you uh, subconsciously think because it's a year long, you got a year to do a deal. And guess what? It'll take you a motherfucking year. The record is 99 days from leaving here 99 days, a deal closed, money, funds transferred, the deal closed. That's the modern era. The old era was 120 days, pre-internet. Pre now I ask you, or I tell you, in the old days, in the investment banking days, it took you uh, 30 to 60 days to do due diligence and get a deal closed, back in the old days, for a $100 million deal which today is probably $200 $250 million. Pre-internet, today it takes 60 to 90 days to get a deal done. With the internet, why? Anybody? Over analysis. Pardon? Over analysis. Absolutely, but I mean, because this era has none of these, and they're afraid to make a decision. That manifests itself in too much analysis, but you're afraid to step up and be counted. Back in the old days, and not my day, but the generation after my day, you got paid by deals. You didn't get paid, you know, you got a... Uh, the salary used to be, and correct me for the ex Bear Stern guy, it used to be $60,000 for a partner, and then it went up to $100,000 to a partner, uh, but this is uh, pre-bonus, and then it went up to $200,000 a partner, all the partners. I wasn't a partner. And, um, and then they used to fight over how much money you got for bonuses. But if you didn't do any deals or you didn't create top line, which better have related into bottom line, you didn't get paid much. Now the salaries are too fat. People can live without bonuses. And they push out deals. 75% of all the deals done in the, on the planet are done in the last 90 to 120 days of the year. I'm going to say again. 75% of all deals done on the planet are done in the last uh, 75 to 90 days of the year. Why? Because they're pushing to get a year-end bonus. They're, getting, they're pushing to get a Christmas bonus or whatever they call it. And the bankers are no different. They've got to get money out the door. I tell the story, and it's not a story, it's true. Many years ago, I was sitting in the library uh, drunk with a guy that ran um, uh, Lloyd's in Scotland. And it was, he said, Dan, I'm 775 million pounds underinvested. Can you help me out? This was about October-ish. So again, the kid that wrote the War and Peace, if he had listened to me, which he ultimately did, but see, he's going to, and, and, and most of you that I've talked to so far, I think I've talked to five of you, four of you, the exception was Josh, because I talked to him as well. They, you didn't tell me this, but it was obvious to me uh, some of the things, um, and with you as an exception too, you were going to take it on board. Does everybody understand what take it on board means? You're going to think about it. You're going to see how it works vis-a-vis -vis your personality, your life. If you're going to do that, you, might, you wasted your money coming here. I don't give a fuck what you think. If you were so fucking smart, you wouldn't be here. Again, I'm the last saloon in the last town, and the earth is flat. After Guthrie, it's the abyss. 
Because you, everybody in this room, with one or two exceptions, has tried every fucking thing known to man to try to be successful and create wealth. Some of you have, have um, uh, what do you call it? Internet marketing, affiliate. God, what a fucking waste of time. I mean, but I got kids that have made a lot of money doing that. But they're not creating generational wealth. I've got kids making five, six, seven million a month with affiliate marketing. But they can't sell their business. That's not generational wealth. Remember, if you did your, and most of you didn't, if you read the shit that you were supposed to come here, 95% of all businesses that go up for sale on a yearly basis around the planet don't sell. Why? Because they're asking too much money for it because they're trying to get rich off one transaction. Because they've listened to your uncle, your brother, your cousin. Uh, well, I'm going to put my money back in my business because I understand my business better than any other. That's horse shit. If your business is horse shit, you putting all the money back that you make back into it is still horse shit. So then you're trying to get wealthy off one transaction. So then when you go out and you're using the uh, QLA model to buy for motivated sellers, and we're going to talk about it, then we're going to go definitively what a real motivated seller is, they're trying to get rich off one transaction, so they're asking two or three or four times more money than it's worth. And I'm here to tell you, you can buy businesses all day long for two to five times EBITDA. And we'll talk about what that means. And they're asking 15 times EBITDA. Because they've been in the business 35 years and they're fucking poor. Most of you that have businesses, you should just turn the key. Just, you're wasting your fucking time. Either that, most of you should have rolled down the inside of your mother's leg. Should have been a fucking abortion or miscarriage for what you've accomplished in life, which is nothing. Okay, you saw last night Mm -hmm. The first thing you saw was what? Yeah, now, now, that was a black lady beating the shit with a, a broom or a mop or a club or something to some white kid, right? Now, if that had happened, the news never got it. It never hit the news. CNN and, you know, if that had been a white teacher hitting a black student, They'd be interviewing the cocksucker on fucking CNN. That's where we are in the world. That's where we are in the world. So what was the uh, takeaway from that? The world's upside down and fucked up. Correct. Correct. And that's why it's even better for us. Now, as I announced last night, we just crossed over the longest bull market, the longest expansion, economic expansion in the history of the planet. I said, it couldn't, if Allah, Buddha, and everybody gave me all my uh, wishes on my birthday, which was not too many days ago, it couldn't be any better. It couldn't be any better. From chaos comes order. The second thing you saw was, um, Oh, oh, 20 bucks, the kid jumping on the... See, your parents didn't teach you to do any of that. Mine did. If you, if for those of you that have children, if you, and that guy, they tried to put him in jail, by the way, for telling this kid. The kid, 20 bucks, he's what, four years old, something like that? 20, but fuck, I'll do anything. That's how I was. None of you in this room were probably raised that way. I was. I saw my first dead body frozen to a log when I was six. And on that happy note, oh, by the way, YouTubers, um, yes, this is a suit that says $50 billion man. I did get the idea from uh, uh, McGregor. Um, and um, the, I have some other suits being made uh, with the same thing. Um, OK, thanks, YouTube.